was going to get his wish, and we're going to see if it was a thing of motivation or it was just a thing of of, uh, of, of learning the plays and doing and doing the right thing with this quarterback. Well, Branson, I, I think that there's one thing that um, I see as being clear in this coaching staff is that they are um, they have a very set plan of the way that they want to deal with players. They do not um, play favorites. They do not really take any kind of guff, if you will, from veterans, rookies, any of that stuff. They have a system that they want to put in place, a culture that they want to build here, and they're um, going about it very systematically. And and it's something that we haven't seen in Cleveland uh, since the Browns returned in 99. To me, it's very refreshing. I'm very much in support of the coaching staff in that regard. Um, There are some other issues that the coaching staff has, I believe. Obviously, all coaching staffs have them. They're not perfect. Uh, Game day decisions being one of them uh, as far as, you know, uh, time management and things of that nature, they all have hiccups. But specifically, uh, the culture that they're building in Cleveland, is that something that you see when you're at the facility every day? Uh, Is it something that you feel is going to progress this franchise in the right direction and finally, finally give the Browns some sort of um, stability and um, confidence, their fan base some confidence moving forward that they have a staff in place that they can win with? Well, GM Ray Farmer has talked from the very beginning about uh, playing like a Brown, and and what he it means by that is you know being first class at all times, uh, team being first, organization being first. Uh, the Browns have a rich history, and 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 remembering that uh, on and off the field, and and that's has been uh, uh, what they've spread throughout the organization since. Uh, Ray, Ray Farmer became the general manager, and then that's gone to to Mike Patton. Mike, Mike Patton also. It, it's it's about just being about the team first, and and not the individual. Because you know football is, is you know the cliche. It's being you know being the ultimate team sport, and 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 it, and it, it is, and, and it's something that uh, it, it takes a whole unit and a, an entire organization of being on the same page, you know, on and off the field. Uh, and definitely will help you reach your goals. So, uh, so that, so that's, uh, that's one thing I do uh, appreciate about Patton uh, that, uh, you know, he's a straightforward guy, you know, as far as with the media, you know, he tells you exactly, um, you know, how he feels and, and what they're trying to accomplish. And, and the players say the same thing about him. It's, uh, no BS with it. And, uh, and then you can just see that throughout the organization and, and, uh, and definitely the way these guys are playing on the field. Yes, indeed. Now, Branson, you know, we got three games left with the Browns. Do you see the Browns going two and one or one and two? Because I, I, I see one and two, to be honest with you. But well, tell me your opinion of you see them more than I do. How do you feel they're going to end up with, with Johnny Football at the hell? Well, the defense is good enough for them to go uh, three and oh or, or two and one. And it all – just comes down to the quarterback play now. The uh, the Browns have been in every game this season, and it, and it's because because of their defense and when they get the running game established. But um, you know, I, I have them going uh, two and one actually. Uh, I think they can win in Carolina, and and I think they will definitely beat the Bengals tomorrow because the Bengals. And I think it just goes more on uh, not what the Browns will do, but what the Bengals will do. Andy Dalton, you don't know which Andy Dalton you're going to get with the Bengals. Uh, whenever there's a pressure game, i.e. playoff game, uh, which in some ways this is a playoff game, but the Bengals seem not to play up to par. And uh, I just think the emotion uh, for Sunday's game, as far as the Browns are concerned, is just going to be too much for the for the Bengals to overcome. So, you know, so Manziel doesn't make uh, many mistakes. He just stays within the frame of the game. Uh, I think the Browns can finish out the season going 2-1. Well, Branson, we appreciate you joining us this morning on the Boss Man Show. we got to do it again real soon, buddy. And we, we'll check back with you after the season and get you your take on the whole season as a whole and see where we are with Johnny Football, Mike Pitt, and everything else, my man. All right, sounds good, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. That was Branson Wright, Cleveland Plain Diller. Coming up next, the Boss Report. 
hip hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENT, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to do two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, illstreetrex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today. True Speech and 313 Fresh. Family Grind ENT. Believe in it. Get it. For all your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at BlueberryProductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions. Also, a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Welcome back to the John the Boss Man Show with John Beckler. You've been waiting for it all show. It's time for the boss reports. We're going to queue it up for you. John, first story today, John. Utah man arrested for sunbathing nude in his backyard after members of the church he lives next door to called the police on him. <laughs> Listen, man, what you do in your own, in the privacy of your own home or, or even in your yard, it's kind of your business. I, I guess you have to be a little bit you know, uh, uh, cognizant of what's going on around you, you know, and who, who your neighbors are and who can see you. So from that perspective, yeah, I get see getting upset, but why would they call the cops on the guy? Why not just go over there and be like, Hey man, you know, like we, we were church next door. We got kids running around. Everybody can see you you're buck naked. And then if he gives you any problem, yeah, call the cops. But uh, I don't know, man, <laughs> it's, it's your backyard. Do what you do, right? I would think so. I would think so. And a Florida man arrested after leading police on a 90 minute chase in stolen front end loader. In a stolen front end loader. If you're getting away from the cops for 90 minutes in a front end loader, JR, you got some skills behind the wheel, man. He must have been doing like some, some Tokyo drift maneuvers with that thing. <laughs> like, I mean, it's not like those are fast vehicles. You know, what, 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 was he, what was he doing to evade the police for 90 minutes? I mean, that, what, I I would have loved to have seen that one, like you know the the old um, uh, OJ OJ white Bronco police chase video, but substitute the uh, the front end loader in there for the white Bronco and just and see how that plays out. I would love to see video of that. I would have too. Too bad with no video. They just had it in print form only. And a faith killer, John, told rape victim, "quote He was using special powers to quote remove the devil from her vagina." So basically, he was he was the rapist in this case. Yeah. And he was trying to go with the faith healer, and that okay. I mean, that's <laughs> the first time I've ever heard that. Um, that's just terrible. Like you're just adding insult to injury. Like you've already committed a very very grievous act against somebody, and then you're coming with that terrible take on top of it to you know try and get out of it or justify it it's just that's so so bad so bad it's very bad and just like this a florida man arrested on a drunken rampage through grocery store on motorized shopping cart i wonder if it was the same dude with the front end loader i mean you know like that's his that's his deal like he just he wakes up in the morning and he he just goes out to, to find the, the slowest vehicle possible to try and, and like, uh, you know, get into the high-speed chase with the cops. You know, so he got done with the front-end loader situation, uh, hopped over to the grocery store, hopped in one of the little pride jazzies they got floating around up by the front door to see what kind of damage he could do in that bad boy. <laughs> That's Grand Theft Auto, Florida, if you need it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And a Georgia man arrested after assaulting five people in hospital emergency room. What did it give the reason why he was so like violent? It said, "quote He he came in disoriented and said the doctors prodding sent him over to the edge." Yeah, I mean, I, you know, listen, if you've ever been in in the emergency room in jail, you know that I've made multiple trips to the emergency room with the girls. You know, it's like a, an everyday occurrence in my life. If you go to the emergency room and you hang out long enough, you will see this, you will see some stuff that you have never seen before. There is some stuff because people are in distress. You know, you're in the emergency room, you're in distress, 
And when you're sitting there waiting for like three hours because you got a gunshot wound to the head, you, you probably would get a little agitated. So I, I can't necessarily fault the guy, but you know, some, I, I, listen, there's a reason hospital emergency rooms have security guards, right? Yeah, you're right about that. There's a reason for it, you know, and I've seen the good and the better ERs myself. So I'm right there with you, brother. And a sword wielding Florida man arrested for busting in and stabbing two individuals in their home as they slept the night away. Oh my God. Like, where, where are you getting, where do you even get a sword from, dude? Like, it was a, it was, and it wasn't even like a replica, obviously. It was, it was a, a functioning sword. Like, where do you even, where do you cop one of those at, man? Like, you go to medieval times and, and swipe one off the knights and then, like, sharpen it up? Or, like, like, how do you, I don't even know, man. Like, I'm sure they sell swords out there somewhere, but I, I, I've never run across them. I mean, I'm, that's, I mean, that is that's a new one on me, man. I guess if you're if you're gonna come at somebody, come correct, right? You better believe that, John. And a South African women dry their vajayjays with bleach to quote make sex more pleasurable for their men. Did they dry them out with bleach, and that's supposed to be more pleasurable. Yeah. Like we do the opposite here. Like we're, we're I, mean, I don't. I mean, this is Boss Report International right here, dude. We went all the way to South Africa for some stuff. Now, I don't. Okay, first of all, that's gotta hurt like hell. If you're putting bleach, I mean, putting bleach on your skin isn't good. Putting bleach inside your, you know, uh, your sex organs is probably not the, the best thing. Like I can't imagine, you know, dunk, dunking my berries in, in a in a vat of bleach because of some perver- perverse sex act that's going to take place. So I don't, I don't know. Like that doesn't seem like it would be that pleasurable to me. I mean, I don't listen. I mean, I can go on for days about this, Jr. and I'll probably get myself in trouble, but I mean, there, there's a reason that they sell KY Jelly, bro. <laughs> you better believe it. And also, a Florida man's arrested, John, for firebombing bosses' trucks because, quote, that mess put me on my level. <laughs> That's a classic all-time take right there. That meth put me on my level. <laughs> okay, first, there's there's layers to this one, JR. Like, who hasn't wanted to firebomb their boss's truck at some point in their life? I know you have. Um, I know I have. And I'm sure 90% of the people out there just walked out of work one day like, you know what? I'm going to drop a Molotov cocktail right on this dude's freaking, you know, Honda Prius or whatever they are. You know, blow this thing up. But to come after and, and say, Say, you know what that meth had me on my level i mean what are you gonna say back to that what are you gonna say back to that basically like well i mean all right i guess just let the insurance handle it you know like would you trade insurance information after that like you know i don't i don't know man your car is on on fire in the parking lot just bombed out and the dude's like you know what man i'm sorry that uh that meth had me on my level man you know and what are you gonna say back to that that's a top 10 take ever. It is. It is absolutely <laughs> top 10. Oh, man. A Colorado man secretly living inside of a Denver bar falls through ceiling and gets stuck in the wall and arrested for trespassing. <laughs> How do you secretly live inside a bar? Like, I, I, like, I gotta see the floor plan of this joint. <laughs> You know, I mean, like, what was going on there? Are you are you old enough? Do you remember the show Webster? Ah, uh, vaguely. Okay, well, it, Webster, um, he was the little character, you know, little little boy, and he lived in this mansion, and he had like secret passages all through the house. Okay, and that was like the cool little part of the show was this dude like pulling a Webster where he had secret passages through the bar, and like when it closed up at night, he would just come down and you know get get his drink on and. You know, dude, he had free run of the place, fire up the fry later in the kitchen and make some chicken wings and then, like, crawl back up into the ceiling, you know, when, when they open for business the next day. Like, what? Do you, how do you secretly live inside a bar for, for any period of time? How? Exactly. How do you get away with that and not get caught? Only my man in, in, my man in Colorado and Denver knows. And Johnny Florida man was arrested for falling into a coma while driving a dump truck and driving over beach furniture right into the Gulf of Mexico. Oh my God! 
that's te- that is terrible, dude. I have known some people in the past that, and actually, um, some friends of mine. Their their father was elderly, and he had uh, a health issue. He had a stroke while he was driving, and got in a very serious car accident as a result of it. And you know, like what? Who's to say? You never know, man. When you're when it's your time, it's your time. And that dude, you know.